Personal Finance PowerPoint Presentation, Balanced Funds. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information comes from the Vanguard website, which you can find online at investor.vanguard.com. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, strategies, tools, keeping in mind the two major categories of investments, that being the fixed income, typically the bonds and the equities, typically the common stock. Also keep it in mind tools we might be using, such as mutual funds, ETFs, possibly to help us diversify with a less of an investment upfront to do so. Then if we were to invest in say individual stocks, individual bonds, we've been drilling down here on the different types of mutual funds. Here's a quick recap of some categories of mutual funds. We got the money market funds we talked about in prior presentations, bond funds we talked about in the prior presentation, the balanced funds, that's the one we're gonna take a look at now. Stock funds, we'll take a look at the future, international funds, and the sector and specialty funds. Remember that when we are investing as an individual, we might be thinking then, should I invest in individual stocks and bonds or use a tool such as mutual funds and ETFs? Most of the time, investors will often be using tools such as mutual funds and ETFs. Once using mutual funds and ETFs, we then want to think, how specific do I want to get? Do I want to have one mutual fund, for example, that can possibly give me the balance I'm looking for, which would be the easiest thing to do, and just try to invest in one mutual fund and have the diversification within that fund? Or do I want to, say, break out multiple different types of mutual funds, possibly have mutual funds or ETFs related to stocks and some related to say bonds for example and then get more specific within the realm of stocks and bonds which gives me a little bit more flexibility to invest differently than one overall fund but also of course adds to a level of complexity also keep in mind that we want to think do i want to put my money in in index funds which are trying to follow a specific index and therefore usually have less management cost for the fund managers or do i want to have more active management funds, allowing the managers more capacity to pick and choose things, possibly getting a bigger return if they're a good manager, but then also it's gonna have higher fees. So the question is, can they really beat the market in the long term? Also note that when you're putting money into an IRA or 401k, you're putting them under kind of an umbrella of a tax benefit kind of, of format. And I would generally think that normally you would have something like a mutual fund or ETF that is just basically under the umbrella of like an IRA or 401k plan. So remember those things aren't really different or separate. It's just taking an overall investment, which is similar to what you would invest in outside of an IRA or a 401k plan, and then putting them under that umbrella, restricting yourself because you can't take the money out as easily in order or in exchange for a tax benefit, which has its own implications. So now we're gonna be diving into the balanced funds. So look to balance funds for a mix of income and growth potential in a single fund. So the easiest thing we can do if we're, we're saying, hey, look, I'm a really hands-off investor. I don't wanna stress myself out. I'm, I just wanna have as much diversification as I can with basically uh, with low, low interaction well you can just get a balanced fund generally and try to get a balanced fund that basically gets you well balanced between stocks and bonds and and possibly one that that can even vary or change in accordance to how close you are with uh your goals such as retirement so that they can basically take those uh the steps and give you give the industry practice averages on what would be the best averages for just general industry practice which might be a, a good a way to go you have less capacity than to vary from that strategy that way but that could be a, an attempt to get a good attempt to get some balance in there with with ease with one fund so these funds have a varying degree of risk based on the percentage of stocks and bonds in the portfolio so notice we're talking about you a, a bond fund we could think of funds that have that have pools of different stocks in different areas but we could also think about funds that have both bonds and stocks within the fund so some maintain a steady asset allocation others gradually become more conservative over time so in other words you might check you might select a bond on a fund that's going to allocate between bonds and stocks at some fixed interval or 
and oftentimes, especially when you're looking at funds that are going for retirement that might be under the umbrella of an IRA or 401k plan, for example, the target might be retirement age. And usually as your time horizon gets shorter, the general thought process would be, as we've discussed in the past, that you would want to reallocate your, your investments to those which are going to be more income generated and more stable, less risk as you get closer to the target. When you're further away from the target, you might be willing to take on more risk risk in exchange for growth over a long period uh, of time. So you could actually select a fund that's targeted, common type of strategy for retirement funds, especially those under the umbrella of an IRA or 401k or some kind of retirement plan that's gonna adjust the mix as you get closer and closer to, uh, to that target. So what are multi-asset or, or balanced funds? 96% of our, that's just being from Vanguard, low cost balance funds perform better than their peer group averages over the past 10 years. Okay, Vanguard, stop your bragging here. You can, you can, this, so we'll get the general idea here. You can apply it to not just Vanguard, but in any case, get a mix of stocks and bonds in one fund. Combine the potential for income and growth. Balanced mutual funds invest in both bonds, which focus primarily on income and stocks, which aim for investment growth. So we're trying to get both sides of our investment strategy. And remember that when you actually uh, invest, if you're looking at like the stock growth and the bond growth, then this concept of diversification, which is the key to almost any any financial planner worth their salt that's any good is gonna, gonna somehow say diversification. If you hear them talking on stock channels like Bloomberg, where they're discussing you know their stock portfolios, investment strategy, they got a hundred different words to get back to just basically diversification. But when you're looking at the play between the stocks and bonds, it is more difficult to do because remember that if you're in a situation where stocks are going up, and bonds, for example, are staying quite steady, especially if the interest rates are quite low, you're going to be thinking the bonds are actually losing me money. I want to put my money in the stocks. And you might be tempted to take your money out of the bonds and put them into the stocks. But then, of course, when the stocks go down, then now you're in a situation you're saying, I'm getting killed on the stocks. The stock market's going down. And then you'll be tempted to take your money out of the stocks and put them into the bonds, possibly. Or you might get totally discouraged and just take out the cash entirely which is again, is usually the worst strategy because now the whole point of having diversification over a long point is that you don't know what's gonna happen in the future. And so whether the market goes up or down, we're trying to balance it in such a way that we're hedging against that activity. If you put your money into one fund that has both the bonds and the equities in it, it can kind of help you in some, sometimes to basically say, I'm just, I'm gonna let it ride on that instead of agonizing when you look at them separately each time you're going to be agonizing one way or the other. Like I should be having my bon my money in stocks or I'm getting killed on stocks and I should have them in bonds depending on what the market is doing. And if you're making your decisions based on fear and reacting to the market, you're usually going to be at the wrong end of, of the trade. So add stability to your portfolio. The bond portion of the fund helps offset the risks associated with the stock portion providing you with a quote balanced end quote investment automatically maintain your asset mix so you never have to rebalance a balanced fund it's done for you automatically so that's the ease of it you, you can't have any control over that balancing but they're balancing it in accordance with general the general industry best practices that have been put in place over time so that could be good then if you're if you're an investor that's just saying hey i want to i want to do the industry best practices if you want more leeway more capacity to do what you want to do then you might use multiple mutual funds for example to give you more capacity or possibly have a mix of mutual funds and individual investments if you want to invest in individual stocks because you because you feel you, that would be a, a way to go so some funds maintain a set uh, asset mix while others grow more conservative over time so spread out your exposure to risk by potentially holding hundreds, sometimes thousands of bonds and stocks in a single balance fund. You get more diversification than you would buying individual bonds or stocks. So we know this is the case with mutual funds in general. That's the goal. We want diversification. The, the question is, what's the strategy we're going to use to do it? Usually we're not going to buy all stocks and bonds only as an individual investor because that would be too costly and cost a lot in terms of transaction fees. Therefore, we use tools like mutual funds and ETFs oftentimes 
And then the question is, do I want one mutual fund or ETF that's going to help me to diversify? Or do I want to have multiple funds? Do I want to use index funds or do I want to uh, use active managers? Do I think the active managers can beat the market? Or do I think that I want to just bet on the market over a long run? So how to choose a balanced fund? Picking a Vanguard balanced fund generally depends on whether you're investing for a specific goal like retirement or you have another goal in mind. So oftentimes people are thinking retirement, but you might have another goal like saving for college or something like that. So target retirement funds. If you're investing for retirement, you can get a complete portfolio in a single fund with a Vanguard target retirement fund. So this would just be the easiest way to go, right? You're gonna say, I'm gonna just rebalance my portfolio in a targeted fund. I'm gonna tell them what my retirement date is and they're just gonna rebalance that thing up uh, uh, until I get closer to retirement and that's the way it's gonna be. So simply choose a fund based on the date you plan to retire or your current age and the fund will gradually grow more conservative the closer you get to retirement. And that's generally what you want. You might, why is it doing that? Because that's usually what you want, right? And you want, as you get to retirement, you want to have less risky stuff usually because you don't want to have a downturn or recession right before you hit retirement that just dev devastates your portfolio. Whereas if that happens earlier and you still have 15 years or whatever to recover from it, then you probably still may come out ahead of things if you have a balance that will take into consideration more risk at that time horizon. So see which target retirement fund fits your timeline. You got the lifestyle fund, uh, life strategy funds. So if you prefer a fund that maintains a set of asset mix, a life strategy fund can help you reach other financial goals, match your risk tolerance to a life strategy fund. Traditional balance funds index and actively managed. So remember, we got the difference between this index and actively managed. Actively managed means you're giving more leeway to a manager. That means you're, you're trusting that the manager thinks they can beat the market. These are fairly highly paid managers, so it's going to cost to do that. So you can have expenses related to it to think that they're going to beat the market. Or you're going to say, you know, just, just give me the low cost and just bet on the index, bet on the average rather than the, the betting on an investor who, who's going to be a genius that's going to beat the market. So that's the question you got to you got to consider. So if you'd like a set allocation based on the level of risk you're comfortable with, choose from a variety of traditional index or actively managed balanced funds. Many people start with a core portfolio of index funds and then add actively managed funds for certain segments. And that's not a bad strategy, right? You might say, hey, look, I'm going to I'm just going to get my index funds as the broad base. And then if I really find an actively managed fund, because because I, I, in my opinion, you know, you, you're going to have to find someone that's quite that's good, you know, to, to actually beat the index or beat the market, because I tend to think that the markets are fairly uh, efficient. So so then you so then you might then tack on after you've got your ground base and say, I think this particular fund, for whatever reason, is quite good for whatever reason actively managed and maybe and then maybe tack that on to your strategy in any case index mutual funds and etfs so you have a chance to keep pace with market returns because index funds try to mirror certain mar market segments so when you look at the index funds these are kind of like averages so if we're trying to get an an idea of what the opinion is of a segment of a population we're going to take the opinion of a group of people. So that's a similar kind of thing with the index funds. We're gonna to try to group these companies together that are in a particular sector to try to get an idea of the sector as a whole. And then we can invest on those particular averages in essence. And so that, that's gonna take the, the control away from the money from the fund manager and hopefully cost less. But not all index funds are created equal. Active, uh, actively managed mutual funds. So that's the one where the manager is gonna be more involved in picking and choosing you're you're uncuffing their hands you're letting them pick and choose what they think is going to be the best uh the best way to do it and you're going to pay them to do that it's going to cost more typically so or you can try to beat market returns with investment hand-picked by professional managers so when we say beat market returns obviously the the you would think that the actively managed funds the fund managers can have to justify their salary by saying that they're beating, in essence, the index, right, the average, and they have to beat it in such a, enough that they are that they are paying for their cost that, of them doing that, their salary. So you may be surprised by our active funds performance. So you could check those out.